Hi guys, um, this video um, was planned for a, quite a while, but um, over the weekend I had a guy contacting me on Facebook and this is something that probably most of you know about, um, so I'm not going to go too deep into it, uh, but there are still people out there that are beginners uh, and who needs help um, that it's the best way I can put it um, so he is running some certain mega speakers on um, a receiver and he asked me what the best amp would be to hook up to certain mega speakers and this can be any other type of speaker as well um, and I told him, hey, you should be in this range when it comes to wattage, you should look for these specifications, and these specifications should be in this area. So the technical and the performance-wise is kind of like answered, but a lot of people, for some reason, kind of mixes up and, and, and kind of mixes up integrated amps, receivers, power amp combo with a, a preamp, and let me try as easy as possible to explain what the difference is and so you don't run into a problem. Uh, what we have here, we start with that one, is a preamp power amp combo. The preamp is a Hafler Series 915 Pure Class A uh, preamp and it has a matching power amplifier on the bottom the series 9270 um, very good combo the amp here that I have here needs some service uh, but um, so basically what you have is you have two separates and this is also all often called separates so you have a you have a preamp up here and a power amp down here and what the preamp does let me unplug the uh, so it's easier to switch them around. Basically what it does is <clears throat> you run your signal from either a DVD player, CD player, turntable, whatever it might be, into this top unit, which is the preamp. The preamp on this case um, is the controlling unit of the power amp because this power amp even though it comes with gain control um it's not uh recommended that you just run straight to the power amp and um, so this top portion which is the preamp has um, an input for um turntable and most of them have that turntable cd tuner video aux 2 and tape that's the inputs on this preamp. The outputs are rec out, out two, and out one. Um, pretty in standard normal. Um, some cheaper ones maybe have only one output. This one has two outputs, uh, and you can you can run it to two different apps. You, so you you hook up your RCA cable to the top one, and you run it to the power amp, which has left and right input channels on the power amp and um, so that's basically what you do there's two separate units a power amp and a preamp and together they work as one um, and the way you see these separates and the combo packages like this is the amp on the bottom here has an on and off button this one has gain controls for each channel a lot of power amplifiers don't have that so then you need this top one, which also has, has an on and on button, headphones out, uh, treble, bass, and balance uh, control knobs, uh, tape monitor, uh, tone in, because this one has some MOSFET, JFET topology things. And then of course you have the volume and you have the source selector which you can then choose tuner video cd phono aux one aux two whatever 
Um, so this is the control unit and this is the workhorse. Basically, that is separate. So that's that's like a preamp power amp combo. A lot of power amps will not uh, they they will work, but not as intended if you don't have a preamp hooked up to it. Do you have to have matching? No, you can have separate power amp, se separate brands from power amp to preamp. You can mix and match; doesn't matter. This was just made in a series to match each other from half flirt. So, so that's how they made that. Now let's look at what's the difference between this and an integrated amp. Let me show you. Right down here, we have an integrated amplifier, which is much lighter. <laughs> what we have right here is an integrated amp. And what an integrated amp is basically the word integrated means that you have a power amp and a preamp in the same cabinet one unit instead of two separates like i showed you earlier here you have all in one so you have your volume control you have your source selector aux tape tape one ta well tape one tape two cd tuner and phono uh rec out selector you have loudness you have balance treble bass speaker a and b uh, and of course a power button and a headphone out so that's basically uh, uh, an integrated amp because it has everything included except for one thing a tuner it does not it does not have a tuner um or a radio receiver um so this is a yamaha ax470 integrated amp Fairly nice one, um, not the most powerful one, but it has enough power to drive a certain amount of type of speakers. Uh, I like this one a lot, it has good sound. So if you look on the back side of this one, I don't know how, how good you can see it, but you have speakers A and B out. Um, phono, you have phono in here with the ground thing there, you have tuner in, CD in. Uh, tape, uh, rec out, tape, well, tape one, rec out, tape B, e, rec out, and aux. And th this one also have some extra power outlets, so you can hook up several units to it, like a CD player or whatever. Um, so this is like all in one, uh, except for the tuner part. Oh, well, it doesn't have a tuner or radio receiver, but it has like the preamp and the power amp in one box so you can hook up a cd player or a turntable directly to this one you have volume control on the front you can control everything from this one unit by itself and it for many integrated amps are the happy medium um, many people choose integrated amp over the preamp power amp combo because they just want something easy they were, it's a little bit easier setup. Um, you have one box to worry about, and you hook up the CD player and your turntable to it, and then you can um, control everything from here. This one also can, comes with a remote control, and uh, the power amp over here does not. So then, well, then you say, well, what's the difference between an integrated amp and a receiver? Because a receiver is also all in one, many people say. Well, let's look at it. Let, let's put a receiver up here. This bad big boy. And receivers comes in many different colors, many different looks, vintage, newer ones. A lot of them are black. Um, depends on the brand. I took the um, vintage one now, just because it was handy over here. So here we have a, a Scott stereo receiver, 370R. And, and once once you look at it, you see that it has everything that you will need. It has a power section, it has a preamp section. It also has a tuner, a radio section. That's why I call them receivers, because they can receive radio signals. 
So what is the difference between this and an integrated amp like I just showed you? Well, you have, um, over here you have on and off power, as a speaker selector A and B. You have headphones out, bass, mid, treble. You have um, low and high pass filter. You have a volume control and a balance. You have loud uh, loudness. You have mode selector, FM mute, tape, copy and monitor. Uh, and of course you have a selector over here that selects between AM, FM and phono and aux. Um, aux on these old ones are often used for CD. And then of course you have the tuning selector here that tunes on your FM dial uh, and AM dial over here. Um, so that's basically what it is. It is an integrated amp with an added feature of a uh, radio receiver. It has a tuner inclu included in it. Let's look at the back of it. So on the back of this one, you have, of course, speakers A, speakers B. And then you have, of course, the tape 2 and tape 1. You have input like phono and aux. And then you have antenna, and um, you have direct source, ACC source, in and out. Uh, you can put run signals in and do direct signals out from it. So this one has a little bit more than what a normal little receiver has. This should this over here uh, is supposed to be an antenna, but it's broken off, so it has to be put back on or changed, change out. So basically. Um, the, the big difference between an integrated amp and a receiver, although they do a lot of the things the same way, this one up here, the receiver as we call it, has a radio, uh, a tuner included in it. Um, you might also say that, well, isn't there other stuff? Other receivers? Yes, there are. There are, You have AV receivers. Um, and they are used for mainly for home theater. They can also be used for two channel stereo. And that's not a problem. Um, but that's a totally different avenue. Um, most people that run two channel stereo music setup prefer an either a two channel stereo receiver or an integrated amp or preamp power amp combo. Um, I do not recommend AV receivers for music. They're often very, very weak, most of them, and they run very hot. Um, they can be very confusing for many. So if you are at the level where you, you kind of like, you have a little bit of problem or trouble differentiate between integrated amp and two channel receiver and a power preamp combo, I stay away from the AV receivers. Very few of them has enough power to really do anything good. And uh, they're they're good for for movies, and they're good to use sometimes as maybe preamps uh, in a music system because they have so many out. Um, so you can kind of like configure things in a way that you can't really do otherwise, but rarely any problems. So what do I recommend? Well. If you have small speakers, small room, you don't, you, you're not the type who plays loud or anything like that, you, you might get away with a receiver like this at, let's say, 50, 60, 75, 80, 100 watts. But if you like to play a little bit louder, you have bigger speakers, bigger room, you are a little bit more wild when it comes to music, uh, I would say that an integrated amp around 100, 150 watts and up um, will get you started. But of course, the best combo, the best way to achieve what you want, if, if you want dynamic, you want headroom, you want loud, um, you want power, you want control, then you go with preamp and power amp combo. I hope this was an easy, in, like an easy video um, to just describe the basic differences between these types. And until next time, take care.